Okay. Thank you, Madam Chairman, and thank you for holding this important hearing. Um, uh, Chairman Hart, I have a couple of questions for you, if I could. Uh, one, uh, you may well remember the uh, tragic accident we had on the Skagit River Bridge when part of I-5 collapsed. Yes, I do remember it. In 2013, it. Uh, very shocking for people all across America to think that a bridge that uh, transports about $38 million of trade between U.S. and Canada would uh, collapse. So part of the NTSB's uh, deficiencies and safeguard, one of the recommendations was to ban non-emergency use by the pilot escort vehicle. So one of the things that was determined is that the actual uh, hit occurred, but the communication back uh, was not communicated in a timely fashion. So you're recommending that um, that pilot vehicle only if they're communicating with the car for over, you know, uh, uh, what are we extra wide uh, loads oversized, yeah, oversized loads that they that that's the only communication that should be going on between the pilot and that vehicle. Emergency communications in general. So in, in that case, the the uh, escort car actually there was an impact of the pole with the bridge, but the escort driver was on the phone at the time, and and you know that fact of the pole hitting the bridge was not communicated to the following truck. And now Washington State DOT has a seventeen million dollar lawsuit on, against the truck driver, the company, the pilot car, the pilot car company, the owner of the truck car, all of that because somebody was talking on the phone. So anyway, I want to follow up on that recommendation. And also, because you're here and uh, the, you had a blog, I understand, uh, about uh, this. We had a hearing, I think that was yesterday, uh, on uh, this issue of rail car safety and uh, that uh, part of your 2005 most wanted list of improvements, particularly in light of what happened in Virginia, do you believe that we need to, that, that actually these uh, uh, cars that are out there to replace the 111s aren't really that great and that we need a thicker haul? We have several accidents recently involving the newer cars, the 1232 cars, including one in Canada, and we're reviewing them closely to determine uh, whether the additional robustness is actually producing a, a positive result in the real world. But you have doubts about that. Well, we are seeing enough concerns, like in Lynchburg, the train was going less than 25 miles an hour and still breached a 1232 car, so, so we have concerns and we are collecting evidence so based on the accidents about all those cars. So you think a thicker shell, thicker hull? Well, it's a, it's a, it's a multiple approach, including the, the, the thickness of the shell. We don't specify the specific thickness. We just say the robustness needs to be improved, but also thermal protection so that a, so that a car won't be engaged in a, that a fire from another car won't cause, you know, other cars to explode. And, and it's a, it's a multifaceted it, issue. Besides the 1232 thickness. Yeah, so there's, there's, there's the head end protection, there's the thickness, there's the thermal protection. It's a multifaceted issue. But we need more we, thickness than 1232s. Well, uh, that's what we're trying to find out. We, we have only a few, you know, we have a very small end so far, and we're trying to determine whether the thickness was the, was the problem. Okay. I believe that we need more thickness. So anyway, okay, thank you, Madam Chair.